In this video tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to generate an STL file for 3D printing using QGIS and a digital elevation model downloaded from Open Topography. To download a digital elevation model on Open Topography, navigate to Data and Find Data Map. Zooming into the map shows all the polygons of available data. Currently, the USGS 3DEP data shown in green are only available to access by U.S. academics. Zoom in and navigate to the region you would like to select. For this tutorial, I'll be selecting part of the Yakima River in Washington State. And click the Select a Region button to draw a bounding box around your area of interest. Under Results, it will show the selected data set. Clicking on its name will expand to open more information. This data set has both a point cloud and a raster option available. We can use either option to produce a DEM, although in this case, rasters are generally preferable as it allows you to select a larger area. Here, we can select raster, and you can further refine your selection using the select a region tool. You may get a warning that you have selected too large of an area, in which case we can go back and reduce our selected region. Under Data Output Formats, we want GeoTIFF selected. For layer types, we just want Digital Terrain Model DTM selected. If desired, you can select to produce additional visualizations or products. In the job description, you can include a job title, and then you must input your email address. Click Submit for the job to begin processing. This job may take a few minutes to finish processing, and you will receive an email once processing is completed. You do not need to leave this window open when the job is running. If a raster option is not available for your data set, you can generate a DEM from the point cloud. Again, you can use Select a Region to refine your selected area. Here we have a warning that our selected area contains too many points. You can increase processing limits by logging into or creating a free account on Open Topography. We can log into our account, which can be found under My Open Topo, and now we have sufficient processing limits for this job. Under Choose Return Classification, make sure that only Ground is selected. You can additionally select Exclude Noise. We need to have a Point Cloud Data Download selected in order to produce the DEM. Under DEM Generation, we want Calculate TIN selected. You can change the resolution of the DEM, which is by default set to 1 meter, and we want our output as a GeoTIFF. You can additionally select other products or visualizations to produce. Again, you can enter a job title, and if logged into your account, your email will automatically populate. Click Submit to begin processing. Once complete, click on the file under DEM Results, and the file will automatically begin to download. If processed from a point cloud, you do not need to download the point cloud file itself, only the DEM file. The DEM files will download as a .tar.gz file, so we need to extract them twice so that we can open the usable GeoTIFF. You can also rename your file so that it is recognizable. Next, we want to open our DEM in QGIS. QGIS is a free open source GIS software that you can download from QGIS.org if you do not already have it. Open QGIS and begin a new project. Select your file and bring it into QGIS. You can easily do this by dragging and dropping. We now have our DEM opened, but a DEM alone can be visually difficult to work with. So we're going to right-click on our layer and select Duplicate Layer. 
Drag this layer to the top and check the box to turn on its visibility. Then right click on the layer and select Properties. Under the Symbology tab, go to the Render dropdown and select Hillshade. Now we have our DEM visualized as a hillshade, which will make selection for 3D printing much easier. Next, in the top menu, navigate to Plugins and select Manage and Install Plugins. In the search bar, you want to type DEM to 3D and select that option. This plugin will allow us to export an STL file from our DEM. Click to install the plugin if it is not yet installed. Then in the top menu, go to Raster, and we will now have a DEM to 3D option that we can select. In the pop-up window, we want to be sure that our DEM layer is selected as the layer to print. Under Print Extent, we have three options to choose from. Select Full Extent, Select Layer Extent, and Draw Extent. In this case, the Full Extent is the same as the Layer Extent. If we choose our DEM layer, it will generate a red box around its extent. Now, there is a lot of white, aka areas of no data, within the box. If we 3D print this, it will include a large base plate over the full extent of the red box. Instead, I'm going to select Draw Extent, and I'm going to draw a box around the area I want 3D printed, which is focusing on this river meander. Our red selection is now completely within the bounds of our DEM, and we have set the print extent. Then, under Model Size, we have to select our spacing, which is in millimeters. This is essentially related to the resolution and accuracy of the 3D print given the nozzle diameter. Some 3D printers have a larger nozzle diameter of 0.4 millimeters, but it's generally recommended to put in a spacing of 0.2 here. The width and length determines the size of your 3D print. I'm going to put in 125 millimeters for the width, which comes out to be a nice size when 3D printed. Here, you want to be cognizant of the maximum dimensions that can be printed on your 3D printer. The second dimension and the scale of the model will automatically populate. If your DEM has significant relief, you can keep the vertical exaggeration at 1, but I'm going to increase it to 1.5, which often works well for most models. If you are printing an exceptionally large model, you can divide the model so that the components can fit on base plates, but we don't need to adjust anything here. Finally, we need to set the model height, which will build on a lower base for the model. Here it shows our lowest and highest points. I found that in this case, 50 meters less than the lowest point often produces a nice base height for the model. We can finish by clicking Export to STL. It will populate with the name of your DEM underscore model, but if you want to change the name, you must add .stl to the end of the new file name. Click Save and your file will begin exporting. Click OK when done, but keep the window open in case we want to make any changes to our parameters. We're going to check and see how our file looks. Navigate to where it's saved, and I'm going to open it with 3D Builder, which is a free-to-download software on Windows. When we open the file, it will confirm that the file's units are in millimeters. Now you can navigate around and see if you're happy with the size and dimensions of the model. If not, you can go back to the Open tab in QGIS and make any changes as needed. I'm happy with the way that this model came out. Now a benefit to the 3D Builder software is that you can engrave text on the model so you can include a location of what the model depicts. Click on your model to select it and open the Edit tab on top. Then select the option for Emboss. I'm going to drag the text where I want it and then type in the text field the location of my model. You can drag the size and scale of your text. Now to engrave our model, we need to set our Z to negative 50. 
If it's positive, it will emboss it, which will be fragile and lower quality. When you're happy with the size and position of your text, click Emboss. Now you can see that our text is nicely engraved into the model. Then be sure to save your changes to the model. If you have access to a 3D printer, the file can be brought right into the print software. This here is a software from MakerBot Print. We want to open and add our model here, and you can see what it looks like on the print plate. This file is set to be print on a Replicator Plus printer. On the top panel, we can select Estimates and Print Preview, and it will generate a cut file of your model showing the individual layers. This particular print will need about 90 grams of filament and will require about 9 hours of print time. You can also navigate through and see each individual print layer. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, you can use an online printing service like CraftCloud. Here, you simply upload your STL file, confirm its units, and then it will give you quotes for the different types of materials it can be printed with. You can see that the lower limit of 0.2 millimeters is related to the spacing parameter we put in earlier. If doing a basic print with PLA filament, the model will only need a 20% infill since it won't need to withstand physical forces. And then there's a variety of filament colors to select from. Here is what the model looks like printed on a MakerBot Replicator Plus. This printer uses a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so you lose a little bit of detail, but you can nicely hold the landscape in your hand, and we're able to have the name of the location engraved on the side. Finally, I'm going to use some pre-made DEMs from our Open Landform catalog to show some helpful tips when generating STL files from DEMs. Using this DEM of Meteor Crater, we can simply select Full Extent or Layer Extent, as the DEM itself is a simple square rectangle. However, say we don't know how thick to make the base and choose too low of a value. In the 3D Builder software, select the model and go to Edit, then select Split. Drag this layer to where you would like to shorten the base to. Make sure Keep Top is selected, and then execute the split. We've now been able to reduce the size of our base. The opposite can also be done using Extrude Down. Now, say you have a more complex shaped DEM like Dragon's Back Ridge along the San Andreas Fault. If we draw a box around the area we want, there are large amounts of white space included. If we export this to an STL, you can see it has this huge extra printed base around it. To fix this problem, we want to rotate our DEM. In the lower panel on QGIS, you will see a rotate box. Change the angle of rotation until your DEM is at an even horizontal rotation. Go back to your DEM to 3D window, and now you can draw a bounding box with very little white space included. Opening the STL file, you can see this removes the excessively large printed plate area, and much more of your print is the landform itself. You can find additional helpful video tutorials and resources on our YouTube channel and at opentopography.org.